Hello, everybody, and this welcome to our webinar for today on financial modeling. All right, so um, it's quite a small um, session, as in not too many of us here. So I want to make it as interactive as possible. So we'll build this model together. This We're going to build a budget model today as part of the financial modeling webinar. And uh, also, I'll share some information on on the Financial Modeling Institute, some new information about the Financial Modeling Institute. So we have our budget figures, but the thing about building a budget model is not necessarily just you build a model and that's it. You have to also do budget and forecast. You have to kind of report on the budget every single month. So every single month you're reporting actuals against forecast. And that's where things get a little bit tedious. So what I want to do is just do a very simple uh, model. Let's see if I can get some sample data. Uh, we're going to do a very simple model with simple data, but then we're going to pretend that time is passing and we will need to put some actual data in there and some budget data all together in one place. So I think I'll use this data. Let's we go to a budget template. Let me copy some raw data. There's some raw data here. This is just fictitious information. And let's paste that fictitious information here. Okay. So I have revenue, cost of goods, gross profits, SGNA, other expenses, profit before tax, tax, and profit after tax. Right? So let's assume that this is budget. Now, when, once you build your model, if you follow along some of our courses, those that have attended our courses and those that haven't, you, there's actually, I'll give you a link. Uh, I'll give you so probably a coupon at the end where you can actually go and access a course that will teach you how to build a template, a template like this, a template model, a template for your model. So one key aspect of models when you build models is you need timing. Timing and let me just say timing masks. So timing masks, what do I mean by timing masks? Let's even put our financials. We don't even know when our model is starting. Let's say 1st of January, 2018. Uh, so if I come to my menu sheet, let's just agree when our date, our start date is 2018. We're going to build a um, monthly model. So I'll just do monthly total monthly forecast we're going to do for maybe 24 months and this is today's date version 1.0 and that's fine so this is going to be our first forecast here this 2018 or should i in fact let me just put january 2018 so january 2018 and we're going to build for uh, 24 months so in that situation it's good practice. We're going to put that somewhere up here. So let me come to menu. Let's see this menu. And we have a date there already. So let, let me just delete all this. We don't need that. Let's just copy simple budget. Okay. So we're going to put our, our timing here, as in we're starting at a date. This is the first date we're going to start is, let's put it here, equal to, we're starting in January, 2018. So I put an F4 there. So January, 2018, now this comes in as a number. Now in Excel, it dates are numbers. We need to format this as a number because the format cannot change what's in a cell, but changes what we see. And there's a simple format code I'm going to put, MMM-YYY, not the MMM we kind of know, no. So this is the start, this is the starting period. Now going afterwards, after this is, you're probably just going to go in here and I want to move one month forward. So to move one month forward in my timing, you use something called EO month. So EO month gives you the end of month for the next period. So I say EO month one, let's, I'm going to copy and paste special format. I'm just pasting the format on this just to see it. So what I did in here is EO month, and then I'm going to drag this all the way to maybe um, till I get to another year. Let's say this is January, February, March, April, May, December. 
then January, February, March, April, May, June, July, up to December. So I think we're good here. I can delete the rest. Okay. All right, so there we go, cool. So this is period one. This is your first period, second period, third period and stuff. So this is January um, to the end. Now our timing flag, let's assume that we have a way of identifying when our actual data is. I want to be able to identify actual, actual data. I want to be able to identify forecast data. So when I'm building my model, I want to be able to identify actual data and forecast data such that if these are my budget figures, let's just assume that these are my budget figures. I'm going to call these ones my budget figures. Yeah. Now we'll change them to assumptions, but I want to be able to identify when is actual figures and when are, when are forecast figures but I'm going to use a mask to identify them. So when you're building your budget model, you should know that when, if you are in March 2018, that means January, February is actual, and maybe that March is forecast. So I want to be able to identify when is my, when is those actual start? What is my first year of actual? My actual, actual figures, this is, like my small input, figures start on. So I'm just saying, where does my actual figures start on? My actual figures start on what? What's the question? My actual figures start, maybe let's say, um, what, April 2018? I'm just putting figures here. I'm just use the paintbrush to brush this. So let's just say actual start in April 2018. So if my actual starts in April 2018, I'll come here. So my actual data, I'm just going to link it here so that we can see it. All right. Hello. Okay, so I'm going to link it here, sorry. Uh, let's so uh, everyone can see this April. Again, why is it showing a number? In fact, the shortcut to make this, uh, just you do control, is something called control hash. Or if your key, if you, hash is on, on, on three on your keyboard, it's control shift hash. That's what I just did here, control shift hash. So if this is April uh, 2018, one, one aspect of this is, okay, how do I know when actual is and when forecast is. So I want to be able to see if actual is April 2018, that, um, or yeah, actual starts in April, or the actual was up to April 2018. That means January, February, March, April is, is actual, and then May, June, July, blah, blah, blah is forecast. So I want to be able to identify actual data. How, how do I do that? Who can suggest a small formula for me, please? Anybody? I want to be able to say true. What I need here is this. I need true, 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 true. These are actual. And then false, 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 all the way here. False, 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 false. What I want is, uh, this is, um, my actuals are up to April 2018. That's my latest actual. Actual figures, okay, latest, no, actually I should say latest actual figures. Latest actual figures. So the latest actual figures I have is April. What that means is maybe I'm in the month of May right now and all my actual figures are up to April. So I would, I would not want in my final report, I would not want my budget figures to be, I don't want to see budget figures for January, February, March, April. I want to only see budget figures starting from what? May, right? May, yeah. Cool. And the best approach to do that is to create a mask. You need to have true and false is here. Do you get? So here we're assuming these are our budget figures, right? Yes. And then let me just put some fictitious information for our, act for our actuals. So let's uh, assume that our actuals, I'm just going to copy some info here. Let's just say rand. I'm just going to put some random numbers for our actual. Rand between 
the minimum of my figures here, the minimum of um, this F4. This is just me generating data. Don't, don't mind my Excel. So the minimum of those uh, figures from G to, yeah. And maximum of the same thing. So I'm creating random numbers using this uh, fictitious figures I have here. So there we go. Maximum of the same thing. Close, close. So this should give me a random number and it should give me random numbers all through. And what I can do is this, everybody knows that this is supposed to be equal to this minus this, right? It's a formula. These are formulas. These are formulas, these are formulas. And I can just drag that to the right. This is also a formula. It's equal to, equal to gross profit minus SG&A minus other expenses. And then this one is equal to profit after tax minus tax, right? Yeah. Right. So this are random number generators. This formulas here is the same formula as this. So let me just copy this ones down here. I'll just copy the formula. Just being lazy, I should have just copied the formula here. And then this one, um, let's see, this gross formula, this is equal to this, minus this, minus this. The figures themselves are not difficult to get. Everybody has budget figures. The problem is automation. Automation is usually where the trouble is for budgeting. Because every month people spend so much time budgeting when they should be doing more productive work. Do you agree? Yes. So that's, that's what we're trying to automate. So if these, let's assume, right, that these are actual figures. Yeah. And if these are actual figures, let's say our actual figures stopped in, in where? April. April. So these are actual figures. Or even let's leave uh, fictitious figures there. But what we now want to have here is, okay, so what is our, is it, what, what do we call it in your business when you have actual and, and budget and forecast in the same report? What's it, what's it called? Is it um, latest estimate or something? Uh. What, what do you call every, business. every business? What does in your own business? What, what do they call it? It depends on how many months, but uh, uh, they call it F8, F8 plus, okay, F8 plus four, and all those things, four, right? Plus eight, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My former business is called uh, PF1, PF2, okay, yeah, PF1, PF2, okay. So, the trick for us here is we need a way of automating this such that when we have our budget figures and of course we can see how to project these budget figures going forward right it's, it, we'll, we'll learn how to do that but the the core right now is this my my financial report or whatever that i want to show my management for the month of re for this revenue here which what should i pick as my latest estimate should I pick actual or should I pick uh, budget? Actual. So I for pick actual, January. definitely. Yes. So I pick actual for January. But I don't want to do this manually because I would have done it manually like this, right? Let me, by the way, let yeah. me fi fix this figure so they don't change. Although I'll just save the formula for next time, maybe. So I don't need to write it again. Let me just drop it here. And then... Let me just fix these figures. So what I'm doing, guys, is I'm just copy paste special values. It's, like, it's the best friend of a lot of people. Copy paste special values. So you highlight. You do Control C. You know the shortcut. Alt E. Alt E S V. S V. Yeah, nice. So let me show you another way to do that shortcut. So if you highlight what you want to copy paste special values like this, I highlight it. What you do is you take your mouse to any edge. You right click, drag, and drag back. And then you release your mouse. So I don't know if you saw that. It's very funny. Copy and paste special values shortcut. Once you highlight anything, you go to the edge, you drag with your right mouse and drag back. 
And then it gives you options. Copy here as values only. Very nice trick for copy paste special values. All right, so we now have all our figures. So the key thing for us now is to automate this revenue such that anytime our budgets, anytime uh, our actual changes, the forecast figures will change. And I think I should bring those my forecast figures up here so we can see it happening. I'm going to promote this whole line. So if when you're building models, right, it's always uh, useful to have flags and masks. Now, what I mean by that is this. I want to say, is this month maybe greater than or equal to this month, right? Now, for this, these few months, you should make sure that it's first of the month. So we're asking you, this, uh, for you to say you're actual, then this month here, right, must either be greater than, yeah, and I have to lock, I'm locking the column here. It has to be, let me make it bigger so you can see, equals to this, our actual, this is the latest uh, actual figures, must be greater than or equal to this, my uh, figure, or this, my uh, date up there. And what am I locking on this? Who knows, please? Who can tell me? What am I supposed to lock? Anybody? Uh, you should lock the row. Should lock the row. Perfect. Yeah, right. I should lock the two. F4, F4. So now we have a true. When we highlight and drag that to the right. Okay, I think our figure stopped here. So let's just stop here. When we drag it to the right, you see true, true, true. And then you see false here. Why do we see false here? So obviously this is not first of the month. So let's check. Because here we're saying, are you greater than or equal to? If you're greater than or equal to, we should see true. So if, we, if I do a copy paste special values on this, and then we check what it is, you see is the end of the month, 30th of the month. So this is usually a problem. Yeah. So for us to make sure that that's not a problem because this is a monthly model, because this is a monthly model, what you should do is make this end of month. Try and no matter what someone types in here in your inputs. So here in your input, let me change this format so we can see what's exactly in there. The person put that, hey, the latest actual figures in our database is April. So you wanted to type April, but I put first of April. But then in our model, uh, these things here are end of the month. So to avoid that in your formula, make sure you convert, um, you convert to end of the month these figures here. So this should always be automatically converted to end of the month, or you can do it in here. So when you're bringing it from the, um, from the input sheet, or, or I'm using menu sheet, you can come into the formula like this and say EO month, right? EO month tab, then go to the end comma and zero. Zero just keeps in the same month. So you're saying, give me the end of the month of this thing for this month. So if I put, instead of zero, if I put one, it's saying, give me the end of the month for that April for next month. And to give you next month's end of the month. So this is this month's end of the month. So I put zero. Now you'll see true, true, true all the way here. Now forecast is just the opposite, right? So forecast is basically the opposite of this. So there are different ways you could, you could do forecast. You could say, um, if this is true, then this is false. Maybe that's an easier way. Or, or you could say equals to not, uh, well, if you say not true, it's false. But then if you say not false, it's true. Don't know if you know that trick. So because since it's the opposite, we could just say equals to not. So not is a function, is a logical function that just reverses the logic. So it reverses the logic of something. So I just say not, and I drag this to the right. Now, why are we spending so much time doing this? This is the trick about modeling. The, the thing that makes your models dynamic is actually this, these masks and flags. So you can imagine I have a loan, and there are 10 covenants in that loan. I'm going to have 10 masks. And one thing about mask is something called Boolean logic. Uh, so Boolean logic means this. If you say true times false, Look at it, it's, it's actually like mathematics. True times false will give you zero. And the only time you have 
something that's uh, not zero is when you say true, maybe times true, and then maybe you say times 200. What do you think that is? This looks strange, but true means one in Excel. So this will give you 200. So here, we're now gonna say, okay, do you know what? How do I know when to use, uh, when, when am I using forecast? When am I using actual? So you're using actual, this revenue here, is you're going to take this true, and the only time you're going to use true, you just take this true, and I'm going to lock F4, F4, I'm going to lock the row. I will multiply this true, which is checking for actual. I will multiply it by the actual figure down here. Yeah? And I can leave that as re a relative reference, it's the same size. I multiply it by that figure down here. Then I'm going to plus it, I'm going to add it, so this forecast, which I will lock this, and also this forecast, I'm multiplying it, because this is checking the forecast. Is it forecast data we should pick? I will multiply it by the forecast figures. Where is forecast? Uh, budget figure, so the budget figure here. So look at this formula. We're saying true times the actual figure of 37 million plus false times the uh, forecast figure of 43. So true times actual figure down here, which is this 37, plus 37. false times 43 will give us 37. 37. Now, now, because I have done the, what's it called? The, we call it referencing correctly. I've locked the right things. I can now copy this thing. I just copy and paste all the way here, right? Paste the whole thing like this. And then I can highlight this whole thing. I like copy and paste and copy and paste, copy and paste. So what I've just done is we have combined forecast and actual in our model. And all the user needs to do is, okay, we have our actual figures and everybody keeps, they keep typing actual figures. And then once they type the actual figure, they go to their input sheet or wherever it is and say, oh, actuals are now from um, maybe May or June, June 2018. So by typing June 2018 and you go back to your budget data, you will see that these truths have extended to, where have they extended to? They've extended to June. And then it's from July that is false. Actual is now false and budget is now, or forecast is now true. And because of the way you wrote your formula, this is already correct. But then let's make it easy for our users or easier for our users to see when actual is. So I want to be able to put actual in here, just the name actual and then forecast. Maybe we'll put it up here. So we just write a simple if, right? So if this is true, right? This one down here is true, then what? Double quote, actual, right? Else, forecast, or is it latest estimate? Let me say latest estimate, because people like using latest estimate, all right? So once I do that, I have something up here. I can now uh, centralize this or something, and I can drag this Control R. Another way to copy something to the right is Control R. So control R is a way to copy something to the right. I'm gonna delete all of this. Since we don't have data, we're just using fictitious data. So I copy to the right. Another thing we could do just to improve this report is we could actually color this whole column separately so that when actual, actual can be a different color uh, to latest estimate. So it's easier on the eyes for people to see. And to do that, we use our trusty friend conditional formatting. So to do conditional formatting, it's a little bit tricky because right now I want to conditional format the whole table like this, this whole table. So if I'm doing conditional formatting, I highlight what it is I want to do conditional formatting on, yeah? And then I now have to think, I want to conditional format all these columns. I want to maybe color this column light, light green or light, I don't know, light red or something for actual, and then once it sees LE, it should color it, um, what? 
maybe you shouldn't color it, you just leave it. So anytime an actual just appears here, it will now color it. So whenever you're doing conditional format, you need to think about the active cell. When you're doing a conditional format like this, you have to ask yourself, where is my active cell? If I look into my formula bar, I will see G3. G3 is my active cell. Let me enter. If I enter like this, G3 is no more my active cell. My active cell is now G8. So everything you write in your formula is based on your active cell. So if this is my active cell, G8, that means everything I'm writing must be in relation to either G8 or G8 itself. So, and the cell that I want to kind of work with is G3. So look at this. I've highlighted this. I go to home. I go to conditional format. The first step is to highlight for this kind of conditional format. Now, none of these rules will help you. You need to do the format yourself. So you go to a new rule. And then under new rule, you have many options, but really you should go to formula. Use a formula to determine which cell to format. Now, the way conditional formatting works with this style is, as I said, think about your active cell and pretend you don't know anybody else but your active cell. And then once you lock things right, it will work for everybody else. So here we want to, what you're looking for is you write a formula that evaluates to true or false. That formula must evaluate to true or false. So whatever formula you write in here, the answer of that formula must either be true or false. And when it's true, it should implement your format. And when it's false, it shouldn't implement your format. So question is, what is the formula? So we have to think. I want to color the columns that have actual in the cell G3. Okay, see that? I want to color the columns that have actual in the cell G3. So obviously I'm going to type G3. Now, why am I typing G3? If my active cell, this is my active cell, was in I, I would type I3. Okay, that's what, why the active cell is so important. So you have to type, based on the active cell of G3, then I'm G8, I'm typing G3. Now, the next important thing after typing G3 is this rule. Every single column here is going to obey rule three. Like, you know, this column I, I must look at I3. Um, M must look at M3. So if you notice, G is changing, I is changing, M is changing, but three is not changing. So that's what we're going to lock. So you're going to lock three. So here I'm saying equals to G dollar three, not dollar G three, not just G three, and definitely not dollar G dollar three. It is G dollar three. This is called referencing. And if you want to be a good modeler, you need to understand referencing in total. Absolute reference, relative reference, uh, row constant, column constant. So G dollar three, you're asking, are you equal to, and then you put double quotes, actual, double quotes. Now again, this is hard coding, right? But it shouldn't really hard code. So typically what I do is I type this in the cell somewhere and I say it's equal to that. So once you say, are you equal to actual, then you go to format, and then let's do a light fill. Maybe, uh, let's see, I don't know what color is nice. Maybe this color. Okay, so this is a light fill. Now, once I do that, once I, I say, I put the fill, I say, whenever this G$3 is equal to actual, please fill it with this color. Click OK, and you see it fills out. Now, let's test it. Let's go back to our menu and change the, uh, when we got actual, so maybe February 2018. So now we expect coloring to be January and February, right? If we go there, you see January and February are nicely colored and the rest are not. So gradually we're improving uh, this uh, tool and making it a little bit better and easier to manage. So then what you could do is, do you know what? I would prefer to have, so I'm gonna put a, a drop down I'm going to create a combo box to say, okay, my actual figure starts at a certain point. Now, when you create combo boxes, let me show you what it is first, and then I'll explain. If you go to a developer, there is an excellent tool under developer. Developer is, a, is for VBA. It's a different software. But under VBA, we go to insert, and then there are some nice tools in here. These are form controls. They control how people use your model. As much as possible, right? Don't allow people to type. 
into as inputs in your model. If you can avoid people typing, it's better. Give them a list. So if you look at this list, I'm going to click it. Uh, it's a combo box. I draw the box. Now, this is not Excel. This is a tool that works with Excel. The, if Excel is only in cells, anything that's not in a cell in Excel is not Excel. Just take it that way. Now, this tool, how does it work? You have to fill it up. There are two things you need to fill up in this tool. One is you fill it up with lists, and then you designate a cell to be your switch. So I right click, I say uh, format control. Now, what I'm showing you is not best practice. This is not the best way to do it, but I'll just for um, making it fast. So your input range, if I come here, if I was in Excel, right, I would typically do Control Shift to right, but that's not working. You have to manually highlight, unfortunately. You have to drag it manually to the end. So this is my list. What about my cell link, which is my switch? I'm just going to select a cell as my switch. I click OK. Now, once I click out and click on this drop down, uh oh, you see that it's only January showing. And that's because the list doesn't go this way. It only, only takes a list downwards, which is so unfortunate. So it needs a list that goes down, not right. Okay, Excel would have accepted that. Data validation would have accepted this. But Combo Box doesn't. So for us, we could just come in here and generate a list. So we could come and just say, okay, we're going to generate a list here. I just want a list of months starting from obviously when we started, which is this month. And so this is my list. Shortcut, if you remember, control hash. So this is my list. And how do I grow month on month? I basically say, okay, this is EO month, EO month, this comma one. And again, control hash. And then I just drag this down and I create my list. Okay, so that's just a quick way of creating a list. For this one, I can make it end of month by just saying EO month. EO month is a very powerful tool for playing with dates. So this is my list. Let's just name this list. I'm going to highlight this list and give it a name. I'll call it L months or dates, maybe dates. Right. Now, it's not going to be that easy to do this because if I right click this and do format, now my list is now L months, isn't it? If I, I don't know if I put an underscore, you can't press F3 in Excel. See, this is Excel. Anytime you name something, right? If you just press F3, it brings out the names. Very nice. L underscore dates because that is Excel. This thing I, I just brought here, combo box, is not Excel. So if I right click it and go to format control and I click in here and I say F3, sorry, you're on your own, nothing will happen because this is not Excel, just a tool that works with Excel. So you have to remember the spelling, L underscore dates. I hope I got, is it dates or dates? See, I can't remember. So let's check, does it work? Nope, doesn't work. So I think it's dates. Yeah, dates. So if I click out and click on this, you see that you have the drop down now. now this drop down is quite silly, right? What is happening here is as I drag, as I'm just clicking, is instead of giving me the dates in here, it's giving me one, two, three. And that's what this combo box does. You fill it up with a list. When you pick, let's say this is the first item on the list, the second item on the list, the third, the fourth. When I pick, I'm picking the fourth item on the list, all it does is type four in here. So now you need to now come and say, okay, if this is four, then return the fourth date on my list in here. And the best way to do that is using the index function. Now, by the way, if you are a modeler and you want to really be a good modeler, you need to master lookup functions. And the most important lookup function is index. Forget VLOOKUP. Index is the most important lookup function. So if I do index, index is a very funny function. It's so powerful, it has two versions. It has two versions, very powerful. But we're using the first version, we just say okay. And in this index, index is asking for three things. It's basically asking for a list. And then in that list, which row should I go to? And which column should I go to? If you remember, our list is called, I'll press F3 since we're in Excel. 
F3. Our list is called L bits. Now, the row it should go to is actually specified. This, cons this combo box, we went to the trouble of creating this because this is a very cool tool. So we said that this tool needs two things, a list and a switch. So since I'm here, let me just give you best practice. Best practice is when you create your list for this combo box, right? Make sure you name it, give it a name. And we did that. We call this one L um, dates. And then the next thing you should do is designate a cell and make it your switch. So if I call this one L dates, then the best practice is to call the switch, which is a cell just by the side, call it S dates, a switch, S, S underscore dates. So that way I have named two things. I'm gonna make this an input style. So this is my switch. So this is my list and this is my switch. Then this is my combo box. I'm gonna create another combo box. I'm just gonna to go to developer, um, insert combo box under form control. I draw it, I right click it, I go to format control. And because I'm doing best practice, instead of, if you highlight, it will work, but it only work in that sheet. It will never work in another sheet. If you want your combo box to work everywhere, give it a name. Give your list and your switch a name. And then you come here and type L underscore dates. And then, on, oops, that's not underscore. L underscore dates. And you come here and type S underscore dates. Now, once you type those two, look at this. If I click OK and I click out, this is now activated. If I select the third item or fourth item on the list, it types four. The beauty of doing it this way, best practice is I can right click this, copy, take this thing to, this is my budget sheet and paste. I just come here and paste. Now this will work. If I come here, it is working and affecting that other cell. So I can delete this guy, it's not best practice, delete this. But this one, if I select number one on the, or two on the list, if you come back to menu, it has type two here. And because it has type two, we can now use index to affect this cell. So we say, I want to see, okay, let me just select June. I want to be able to see June. See this June? I want to see it in here. So when I select June or July, I want to be able to see July right in there. And to do that, you do equals to index, and I'll give you a very simple shortcut. When you say equals to index, there are three things it needs, array, row, and column. If you use a combo box, your array is always your list. L underscore date. Your array is always your list. And if you're using a combo box, your row is always your switch. S underscore dates. And if you use a combo box, your column is always one. So this is a shortcut. When you want to kind of bring in what is in the combo box into a cell, you use index and your index is basically equal to index. Your list, comma, your switch, comma, one. Always, always, that's how it is, always. Once you enter, you get your value. And can you see our actual has updated automatically? So this now becomes your control, this, this button, yeah? So if I come here, change my, oh, I have actual only up to uh, May. You can see everything works perfectly. And this technique is what you should use in combination with other techniques. We didn't really have too much time to automate how you do your budgeting and how you do your reporting, all right?